super scary Sundays, girl. You better get that out of here. Yes, today is Super Scary Sundays, where we look at true story scary animations and scary videos. And if you enjoy these videos, then go ahead and smack that like button. And please comment down below what scary video we should look at next. And everybody, please just do it real quick. Subscribe to my gaming channel, Yeah Matt Smith. Just click the first link in the description below. And let's go! <gasps> when I was 16 years old, I was at a very low point in my life and I ended up getting hospitalized for four months over the summer. Mm. The doctors were afraid that my heart would give out if I did so much as walk. Wow. So if I wanted to go anywhere, I had to call a nurse to take me in a wheelchair. My mum and dad visited me every day, not always together. Mm. Whenever my mum came alone, she would take me out in a wheelchair to the beach access behind the hospital so I could get some fresh air and look at the lake. One day, my mum had come by to visit, and she took me out to the beach as usual. While we were waiting for the elevator down from the ward, a man stopped my mum and me. Ugh. Your daughter has such beautiful black hair. The way he said it gave me chills. Kind of in a Buffalo Bill-esque, I want to wear it kind of way. Mm -mm. My mum thanked him and chatted a bit, but I just looked the other way and ignored him. I could feel his eyes on me though. Scary. We all pile into the elevator, and as soon as the doors close, I feel something tugging at my hair. I glance over, and I realize that the guy is playing with my hair. Ew. I'm pretty creeped out here, but I don't want to cause a scene just in case he has a mental disorder and can't help himself. Seriously. So I just leaned over as far as I could in my wheelchair, so that he couldn't reach me without alerting my mum. Anyway, we reach the bottom, get off, and my mum and I start wheeling over to the beach mm -hmm. while the guy just stands there by the elevator and watches us go. Oh my gosh. I told my mum what he did, and she said that she would make sure to do something if we ever saw him again. Mm. After that, we kept seeing him, always by the elevator. He'd make a comment about how beautiful my hair is, and my mum would nod politely. We'd get inside Ew. the elevator and he'd try play with my hair, but my mum would move in the way so that he wouldn't be able to. We'd get off and he'd just watch us roll out. This happened quite frequently. It was creepy, but we decided he was harmless. What? That was until about a month later. We went down to the beach as usual, and this time, we didn't see him at the elevator, Finally. but we didn't think much of it. At some point, my mum had to use the restroom, and it was mutually decided what? I was old enough to take care of myself for three minutes. No. I was sitting in my wheelchair, looking out over at the lake and enjoying oh, no. the sun, when I started <gasps> getting pushed. Oh! Thinking it was my mum, I turned around to ask for five more minutes, but oh, no, my. it wasn't my mum. <laughs> It's the f***ing guy. He's pushing me towards the bushes, and the look on his face no. is predatory. No! I scream, but the only other people out there are in a canoe in the water. They can't hear a thing. Oh my god. So I make a decision. I decide Jump if I'm out. going to die. I'd rather it be of heart failure than by this dude's hand. So I get up out of the wheelchair. Ah! and I start sprinting towards the restrooms. Oh my gosh. I look behind me to see if he's following, and fortunately, he's not. He's just standing by the wheelchair, looking shocked. I guess he thought I was paralyzed. I make it back to my mum, who'd run out of the toilet as soon as she heard me screaming. We both look back, and the guy is running away like there's a rocket up his my mum carried me on her back to the wheelchair, and then we rushed to inform the hospital staff. Wow. They put a watch out, and for the next few months, there's security hanging around the elevator on my floor. Wow. But he never came back.
this man in the trench coat needs to be arrested. I can't imagine, that would be so scary if you're just like in a wheelchair and you're just chilling and then somebody just starts pushing you out of nowhere and it's not your mom, it's this creepy dude right here. Not today, man, not today. I mean, bro, put your finger away. Okay, now moving on to another one. The Mall Santa Claus. The traumatizing events of this story happened to me several years ago. This is the first time I'm sharing my story publicly in hopes it may help others who read it. At the time, I was a mother of a four-year-old daughter. Her name is Juniper and she is my entire life. Mm. The day of these events, my husband was at work so I decided to do some Christmas shopping Burlington. at the mall. On the way in, Juniper saw Santa sitting in the middle of the atrium and began jumping because uh -oh. I assumed she associated Santa with presents. We decided to get Ew. into line, even though it was long. We could get a picture and she could tell Santa what she wanted for Christmas. When it was finally <gasps> Juniper's chance to sit on his lap, I immediately felt uncomfortable. I didn't like the way he was staring at her. His eyes were big and looked as if though he had been on something. Yeah. She sat there for a moment and told the man what she wanted as I watched, filled with anxiety. Mm -mm. After about two minutes, he got her off his lap and <laughs> winked goodbye to her and said Merry Christmas. Happy this ordeal was over, we did the little bit of shopping we had to do and pressed on through the day. While I was browsing around one of the clothing stores, I looked up and thought I noticed the mall Santa sitting outside of the <gasps> store we were in. Ooh. Not taking any chances, I grabbed Juniper and walked out of the other entrance of the store. After a little while longer of shopping, we decided to get some lunch in the food court of the mall. Mm -hmm. I kept my eyes peeled because I just had mother's intuition that something wasn't right. We were finishing our food and literally as we were about to get up, the mall Santa came over to our table. <gasps> he walked right up to Juniper and said in a jolly Santa-like voice, Hey there, Juniper. Remember to be good so Santa can come and bring you lots of presents. Mm -mm. She was so excited, and so were all the people around me. It's easy to say what you would do in that situation, but I just stood still. I thought freaking out my daughter and rushing her away from Santa would be a traumatizing event, so I grabbed her hand and told her it was time to go. Yep. She said goodbye to Santa, and we left. Dang. That night at home, I told my husband about the entire story. He was angry, but agreed with my course of action. The next day, I woke up at about 8 a.m. My husband was already gone for work for the day. Mm -hmm. I happened to look outside and saw a strange blue car that I had never noticed parked outside my house. Are you serious? This didn't really bother me considering it could have been anyone, but it was just peculiar. At about 11 a.m., I looked out the window again and noticed the car was still in the exact same spot. I made the choice to go out to my mailbox in front of my home and investigate the car. Don't do it. The car was empty, except for the passenger seat. <gasps> there was a Santa hat on the seat. Ooh. I tried not to jump to any conclusions, but it was just starting to make too much sense in my head. That's creepy. I ran inside and called my husband. He said I was grasping at straws, but decided to come home anyway to make sure I was okay. Mm -hmm. A couple of minutes later, my worst fear... <gasps> was realized. You better watch out. I looked out. out the window and saw the man in his car. You better not cry. It was the mall Santa. And he was taking a picture of my house with his cell phone. Once he saw me, he drove away. Oh my god. And he drove away so fast I couldn't get the license plate number. Where's his sleigh? Minutes later, my husband <laughs> came home and I explained what I saw. We called the authorities, but there really wasn't anything that could be done. Yes, yeah, seriously. I felt angry with myself that I looked at the car all morning and couldn't get a license plate number. Dang. My husband stayed home from work the next day just in case. At about noon, we walked around the house and noticed footprints outside of Juniper's window. Footprints in the snow that neither of us left. That night, I couldn't sleep. I felt wow. like I was just waiting for something horrible to happen. My husband, Juniper, and I all decided to have a camp out in the living room mm -hmm. so she could be with us all night. Shortly after midnight, my husband and I were alerted to the sound of a car pulling up. It was the mall Santa car from the day oh. before. Coming and he down was the approaching chimney. the house with a giant bag in his hand. I called the police as my husband stalked him through the windows. The lights were off, so the mall Santa couldn't see us through the windows. Oh, that's creepy. He made his way all the way to Juniper's window. 
He started to tap on the windows, almost as if though he was trying to wake her up. Dang. My husband stood on the other side of the window, trying not to scare him away until the cops came. Ho, ho, ho. That's when we heard it. Hey, Juniper. It's Xana. Come take a ride in my sleigh and I'll show you the reindeer. Ew. No Praying that the cops would show up any minute, I sat in the fetal position not knowing if this lunatic had a gun or any other weapon. He kept tapping and whispering, It's me, Santa. Finally, the cops showed up. <laughs> when we heard the sirens out front, my husband jumped out the window and tackled them all Santa. My husband yelled for the cops and the cops detained the man. Black man. He didn't have any weapons on him, but his car did have duct tape and rope. It gives me nightmares to this day, thinking of that horrible situation and what could have happened. My Christmas miracle is that my family is safe, and my daughter didn't have to really experience any of the intense feelings my husband and I did over those couple of days. If you as a parent have instincts about the safety of your child, please follow them. If I would have just left them all when I felt uneasy, I could have possibly avoided this entire series of events. No! Merry Christmas! Oh my gosh. Santa Claus is coming to town. And a blue Ford Focus. Oh my gosh. That is scary though. Like, you know, I don't think I'm going to the mall anymore. I'm not going to the mall. I'm not sitting on Santa's lap. Mm -mm, I'm done with that. Okay, moving on to the last one. Here we go. Pizza delivery to Grant. I'm a 28-year-old male, but when this happened, I was about 23. I worked at a mom and pop's pizza shop in a place in Northern California. It's a small farm town and has a few suburbs near it. I kind of did everything since I knew the family. Mm. They trusted me with running things while they were gone. This night though, I was working deliveries and got the weirdest one of my life. Everything seemed fine when I took the order. Pepperoni lady looked ordered good. anchovies on her pizza. And I always think people who order that are weird as mm. She made a point to tell me the pizza had to be hot when it got there, or she wouldn't pay for it. Wow. So I get the pizza and throw it in the warmer, and drive to her house before any of my other deliveries. I'd like to tell you guys that her house was creepy and run down, but it looks like your average one-story new housing development home. Mm -mm. I rang the doorbell and put on my fake ass customer service smile. <laughs> you all know what I'm talking about. And as soon as she opens the door, I knew this was going to be bad. <gasps> that yeah. weird old lady who looked like she was a smoker of 50 plus years looked me dead in the eyes and said, It had better be hot, or I'm not paying like I told you over the phone. Jeez. I understand, ma'am. I made sure to stop by your place first, even though it was last on my list. Bring it in and set it on the table. No. She said this. And now, I don't normally go inside customers' homes don't because I it. read too many stories on no sleep and let's not meet. But at this point, I'm just wanting to kill her with kindness and see where this will go. Mm -hmm. So I say, no problem. I also brought cheese and ranch for you if you need it. Ooh, thanks. As soon as I opened the bag, she grabbed the box and her hand was on the bottom of it just rubbing it. Ew. It's not hot enough. You f do this every time and I'm not paying for this sh not a single dime. One thing I have an issue with is my mouth. I don't know when to just shut up and try to understand where people are coming from. Mm -hmm. Look, lady, your house is a five minute drive from our shop, and I stopped by your place first. There's no way your pizza is cold. If you refuse to pay, you're going to be 86, and I'll notate it on your account. Yes, yeah, seriously. She immediately walked into her kitchen and came back out. She had an old pizza from a few weeks prior she had ordered from us, and threw it at me. Ha! <laughs> Take your f pizza and get out of my house. You're the devil. Jeez. She yelled that at me and kept calling me Satan and the devil. Again, my mouth has no filter and I can't control it. I try, but I fail every time. As I'm closing the bag and laughing about how much I hate my job, I tell her, Alright ma'am, you will not be able to order pizza from us again. I hope you have a good day. God bless you and your house. Mm -hmm. She kept following me outside to my car, screaming about how I was the f***ing devil. Jeez. And there are families out there just watching this all go down. I get in my car and start driving. Once I'm back, I tell my manager what happened, 
and she told me that the lady had already called in and screamed to her about what had gone down. Her story was that I cussed her out and got her order wrong. Oh. My manager shut her down and said I'd never do anything like that. But here's the weird part. She whispered into the phone to my manager and repeated, Send him back. Send him back. Send him back. Nope. She called once a day for almost three months, just whispering this to whoever answered. Wow. She started driving by the restaurant and yelling, The devil works here. You're all going to hell. Now, I wasn't scared. I was just pissed and wanted to retaliate. Because I can't tell you how many times she tried to follow me back to my apartment when I got off work. Oof. One night, I pulled over and got out just for her to stop her car on the road with her lights on. Don't do yelling, it. The devil is here. After this, I jumped back in my car and sped off. Luckily, after six months of dealing with this lady, I found out she was schizophrenic and bipolar mm. and hadn't been on her meds. Her daughter put her in a care home, but when she was cleaning out her house, she saw that her mom had pictures of me all over her bedroom wall with the word. Yep, you guessed it. Devil. What? Scrawled all over it. She found me and explained everything to me. Wow. And thankfully, that was the end of it all. Woo! That granny crazy! Oh my god! Granny calling a pizza place every day, saying that the delivery guy's the devil? I mean, w w what? Hey, I'd probably do the same thing if my pizza wasn't hot. I want it piping hot, boy. Yeah, so be careful out there. If you gotta deliver pizza or if you gotta, you know, go to some random person's house, just be safe. Woo! But that's gonna do it for Super Scary Sunday today. Thank you if you guys made it all the way to the end. And if you enjoyed the video, then go ahead and smack that like button. But yeah, I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow. Stay safe out there, and until then, 